So we're going to continue looking at um, vector spaces in Rn. Let's look at R3. So in this case, well, definitely R3 is a vector space. Um, if you take any two uh, vectors of length 3 and you add them together, you get another vector of length 3. It contains the origin, contains scalar multiples, so we're good to go, right? Let's take a look at, uh, suppose we take all vectors from R3 uh, that have the property that the second coordinate is non-negative. Okay, is this a vector space? Well, first we check to see if 0 is in V, and we say yes. So if I look at the vector 0, 0, 0, the second coordinate um, uh, definitely is uh, non-negative. It satisfies that inequality, so we're good to go. Uh, what about if I take two vectors from there and add them together? So let x, y be elements of v. Okay, then x looks like uh, something, something, and something else, where x2 is non-negative. And I don't know anything else about it other than that. And y looks like something, something, and something else with no relationships uh, other than the fact that we know that the second coordinate y2 has to be equal to 0. So if we look at the sum, then we have x1 plus y1, x2 plus y2, x3 plus y3. OK. So the question is, is x plus y in the given set v? Well, for that to be true, we need to answer the question, is the second coordinate uh, greater than or equal to 0? Because the uh, definition of being in the set is that the second coordinate needs to be bigger than or equal to 0. And so since we know that uh, x2 is non-negative, and we know that y2 is non-negative, if we add these together, then we get that x2 plus y2 has to be uh, whoops, bigger than 0. So yes, it works. OK. Um, what about uh, c times x? Well, c times x, so I'm checking closure under scalar multiplication now. So this is cx1, cx2, cx3. So the question, um, is cx an element of v? Well, then this amounts to asking, is c times x2 non-negative? So is that guaranteed to be non-negative? Well, no, because any we're allowed to use any number in R. And so this fails if c is a negative number. So this is not a vector space. OK, let's look at some other examples. Suppose I take uh, my favorite vector, um, uh, 1 minus 1, 2. OK, so I just randomly chose this. And I say, uh, let's let u be the collection of all vectors in R3 that have the property that u looks like some scalar multiple of uh, this vector. OK, so um, <coughs> now I need to check uh, uh, closure under addition and closure under scalar multiplication. So let's let x, y, x and y be elements of u. OK, then um, <coughs> x looks like t times 1 minus 1, 2. And y looks like, and what should I put for y? It's a scalar multiple of 1, negative 1, 2. I should use anything except t because I already used it. So let's call it s. So, so key point here 
is that these here should not be the same. Otherwise, all you're doing is you're picking x and x, the same element twice from the set. And then you're asking like, oh, if I add something from the set to itself, does it get back in there? Well, that could be true, even if the set's not a vector space. So they have to be different things. OK. So <clears throat> then let's see. If we do x plus y, we're going to get uh, t plus s minus t minus s 2t plus 2s. And you say, OK, so is that, well, oh, now we have to see, is this a scalar multiple of that vector? And so, well, look at this. If I pull out the common factor of t plus s, that scalar, it looks like 1 minus 1, 2. So yes, so this guy is back in u, so it's closed under addition. Now we just need to check scalar multiplication. So c times x is, and so this is going to be um, ct1 minus 1, 2. And I can just say, oh, look, this is uh, definitely, it's a scalar multiple of 1 minus 1, 2, uh, where the scalar multiple is c times t. So that's clearly in u. So we're good to go. So u is a vector space. And in fact, it's a subspace of R3. Um, now let's uh, stick with my same favorite vector here and take v to be the collection of vectors of length 3 that have the property that they are uh, orthogonal. Oh, you know what? We already used v. Let's, let's use w. OK, so w is going to be the collection of all things which are orthogonal to my favorite vector. OK, so let's see. So is this guy a vector space? Well, we are going to say, uh, oh, I forgot to check the 0 for the last one. But um, 0 is a scalar multiple of that vector, so 0 is in u. OK, let's, let's do that here for this one. So um, 0 dotted with 1 minus 1, 2 is 0. Uh, <coughs> and, and so that guy is, is, in, uh, is in W. So OK, so there's the 0 check. So it contains 0, so it's, it's, it's a good candidate. That doesn't prove it is a vector space, but it, it shows we can't rule it out in that regard. So, um, so suppose we've got x and y, both elements of W. OK, then. Um, x dotted with 1 minus 1, 2 equals 0. And y dotted with 1, negative 1, 2 uh, is equal to 0. <coughs> OK, that might be a little bit more useful to understand if we write out what the dot product is. So the first equation says x1 minus x2 plus 2x3 equals 0. And the other one is the equation y1 minus y2 plus 2y3 equals 0. And so when you write it in that form, maybe you notice, oh, this is a plane. Right? So <coughs> things that satisfy an equation like that are, are all going to form a plane. OK, so if I look at x plus y, well, let's see. Is it in there? Well, what do I do? I look back at the criterion and say, OK, look, in order to be in here, you have to be orthogonal to this vector. What does that mean? Well, I should check to see if I take the dot product. So if I take x plus y and I dot product it with my favorite vector, do I get 0? OK, so the equation for that, or the calculation for that, is um, we say, OK, so what can we do? Well, we can distribute dot products distribute. So this is x dotted with 1 minus 1, 2 plus y dotted with 1 minus 1, 2. And then 
we chose x so that the first one would be 0, and we chose y so that the second one would be 0. So when we add them together, we get 0. So yes, now going from the very beginning to the very end, we have that the sum is orthogonal to my favorite vector. So it must be in there. So it's closed under addition. What about scalar multiplication? If we look at Cx, um, is this guy in here? Well, the question to ask is, is Cx dotted with my favorite vector equal to 0? And so the calculation for that is we say C times x, and we go ahead and we dot it with 1 minus 1, 2. And notice that I can pull the scalar out because scalars are slippery. Whoops. And so this is x dotted with my favorite vector. And we know that the quantity, because we chose x to be in w, we know that the stuff inside the parentheses has to equal 0. So we get 0. So it is, in fact, a vector space. <coughs> okay. And so as I pointed out, um, w is actually a plane. And maybe you noticed earlier that u was actually a line. And both of those go through the origin. And so this is, this is not a coincidence. So if we have, uh, let me draw some axes here. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, I always draw these in the wrong order. There we go. OK, so w, where was the vector? So that was uh, 1 minus 1. Two. Okay, so uh, here's that vector I was talking about, and so uh, the vector space. Uh, wait, what was it? U or V? U was this guy right here. So there's the vector space U. And the vector space W is going to be everything that's orthogonal to this. So some sort of uh, plane that looks like this one here, passing through the origin. Hopefully that looks like it's orthogonal to the green guys. That's supposed to be a, a right angle right there ah, with anything in the blue plane. Um, so that was W. <coughs> and so the subspaces of R3 turn out to always look like this. So again, we have 0, the trivial vector space. We have lines through the origin, like u. We have planes through the origin, like w, and all of R3 itself. That's the complete and total list of all subspaces of R3.